In this video, we're going to cover one of the workflows for automating post-wildfire hotspot detection. To start, we're going to need to determine a perimeter. One easy way to do that is to simply fly the drone with the camera angle at about 45 degrees around the perimeter to determine it. Let's hear from LAFD's chief UAS pilot, Steve Hamilton, a bit more about this. Yeah, if we do this, it allows us to create a map easier. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because when I go to draw that image, being a field guy, it's really hard from down here, right? But this is going to show up perfectly when I go to uh, make the map. And I'll see exactly where my perimeter is based on this flight, as long as I don't turn off the remote, right? Yeah. And there we go. One of the additional tools we have available if utilizing the Matrice 4 series or M400 is cruise control and manual terrain follow. Let's take a look. Now I'm going to turn on cruise control. So now you're going to set your speed how fast you want to go. Just push the drone forward. And then do what? And then hit the C1 button to lock your speed. The same button? Yep, the same button you're using to drop the pins. Okay. So, so push it and hit C1. Okay, oh so my gosh, it's at, flying and it's doing elevation. Yeah. I'm not doing anything except steering it left and right, guys. Hey guys, check this out. I'm fl flying the perimeter of the fire, and I have it on cruise control for up and forward, like up and down and forward. So I set the speed, and now I'm just flying the perimeter to get the shape. Does that make sense? I'm only using my left controller. Do you see that? Yep. And it's going up and down accordingly. Yeah. yeah. But that's gonna that feature there will keep us from getting in trouble when we're in an area where we can only go so high mm -hmm. and we don't know it's hard for us to tell when we're way up there, you know? One additional tool available with the four or four hundred series is also the ability to draw an AR. One can draw out a line or polygon using the laser range finder to get distance measurements and save those to the map. After determining the perimeter, we'll need to go ahead and choose a flight type. We have two options here. For smaller fires, it can be easiest to simply fly the entire area, and that's what we call an area route. You can see the example route there doing the lawnmower over the entire area. For a campaign fire, a larger fire, we're just going to be flying the perimeter. That may be the more reasonable option based on transmission of the drone, capabilities, and just what we have time to cover. Now it's time to plan out that flight. We can navigate into our automated flight route section directly on the piloting screen, or go back to the home page and select flight route. From there, we're gonna hit the plus icon, then create a new route, and for this example, we'll select the area route but one could also select the linear route if you were doing the perimeter. From there, based on the flight track that we see, the perimeter that we drew, or a perimeter that we went ahead and imported, we can go ahead and draw that flight area around our perimeter. Next up, we'll make sure we have the correct aircraft model and camera and then going to select wide and infrared for our camera type because we want to capture both types of data. From there, within the mission planning, we'll leave it on ortho collection and going to adjust our altitude mode since there is terrain to AGL, which stands for above ground level. Because we have sufficient lighting, we're going to go ahead and enable real time terrain following if we didn't, we could go ahead and select a DSM and download that from the internet directly within the Pilot2 app. Going to adjust our altitude or terrain follow altitude to as high as we can go. In this case, that was 300 feet. We can disable elevation optimization because we don't need an additional flight line at the end to help our elevation accuracy. And then we'll adjust our safe takeoff altitude to a safe distance for takeoff. In this case, just going to fly up to the same altitude as our start point. Again, we can see that's at the bottom of the hill there. 
Those are the main settings one may want to change. Within the advanced settings, you can edit your route start point. You can see it's the green circle on the map. If you want to go ahead and start it off at the same elevation you are, at that point, that's already default here in the map. Do usually leave the overlap on default, but in this case, I was looking at bare earth. Didn't necessarily have any vegetation to contend with. So just to up the flight speed a bit, ended up dropping the overlap to 70-70. Go ahead and save our mission now, and it's time to check the thermal camera settings before flight. So we'll go ahead and go into that infrared camera there on the left side. We'll make sure we are in the high gain mode for the greater temperature sensitivity. And then we're going to go ahead and tap the color palette and select white hot and verify our isotherms are also turned off. White hot's gonna give us good visibility as the pilot. And then we also want to verify that we're not filtering any data out during the data collection. Now we can go ahead and start our mission by hitting the play button in the top left. First, we'll double check our pre-flight checklist here. Our max altitude needs to allow for flight up to an altitude relative to our takeoff point. So as we can see, we're going up a hill here. So that relative altitude is going to be higher while we're still keeping the ground at a safe altitude above ground level. Looking back, the return to home altitude is relative to your takeoff point as well. And the drone is either going to ascend to that altitude or if it's above it, stay at that altitude as it comes back to the home point. So should have been down at 300 feet there. And then proceeding into our mapping checklist, also would have been a good idea to set our values here to hover instead of return to home because we'd like to reestablish connection to the drone and manually fly it back to maintain the height above terrain uh, instead of ini immediately initiating that return to home. Obviously, a lot of the times you're not going to have a signal disconnection and one can simply pause the mission afterwards, which is what we did in this case. But looking back at the checklist, the hover could have been a better option there. At this point, we'll go ahead and start the mission. You can see the drone is going to ascend to our safe takeoff altitude and then fly to that first waypoint. The drone's gonna start the data collection. We can see the real-time terrain follow in the bottom right. We can also switch over to the FPV camera view. If you have FPV or vision assist with the drone, those are nice and full color here on the M400, but we can switch to any of the camera views or simply watch the FPV view if we want. Definitely not as stable as the gimbal. From there, it's just watching the drone. We can hit the pause button on the remote controller or screen at any time. And as the mission concludes, you have an option to view a quality report. Next, moving into data processing, can bring the imagery into a software like Nova Maps to get a orthomosaic and automated analysis of the hotspots. From there, can export the data from Nova and using Flight Hub 2, import a KML of the hotspots and distribute that to the pilot in the field. When working with the incident commander, the pilot can then select a specific pinpoint on their map or someone can change the color of the pinpoint from Flight Hub 2. And pilots are able to fly directly to that pinpoint based on the compass and location. Draw a temperature area box on the screen to see the hottest and coldest temperatures at a location. You can see pinpoints there are pretty spot on. You may need to change the gain mode over to low gain if you are looking to see the temperatures now that we have gone ahead and detected them and then can coordinate with team on the ground for helping them locate that and complete mop up. You can go ahead and tap and hold the pin button on screen or remote controller, then tap check all pins and change the color of a hotspot if you'd like after taking a look, just so you have that marked. Thanks for joining us during the video today. If you'd like to learn more about this workflow in depth, feel free to check out our full webinar with Nova Maps and LAFD, 
where we dive into this workflow.